What's going on everybody? Welcome to Chop and Brew. We are once again in the basement of Mead Master Steve Fletty. I'm also here with the one and only Badass Brian Adams. We are at the end of a six month odyssey of a beverage called Smoke Mead Every Day. <laughs> what started as a joke in an episode last fall has become a very real and very awesome thing. So we're gonna go back in time. We're gonna make a smoked mead with Brian Adams and Steve Fletty. We're gonna go through the tasting and the blending, the process that Steve decided to use for smoking the honey mm -hmm. for the mead. And then we bottled it up today and we're about to drop some tasting notes on y'all. So ride with us. Smoke mead every day. That's <laughs> <laughs> where you fade away. Yeah. That's where our brains are gonna fade away. <laughs> So as I mentioned, this kind of started as a joke, like Brian Adams tends to say, smoke meat every day, kind of like the Snoop like Dogg. Like smoke meat, that's where it started. Oh, it was smoke, it's meat, smoke meat every day. every day. We were cooking or something. But the Snoop Dogg song, smoke weed every day, is yep. clearly. Yep. But and then that morphed became into smoke, smoke meat. meat every day. So I, like, I randomly said that in an episode with Fletty, and like a light bulb just like, didn't just go off, it like exploded. <laughs> and he was like, how would we do that? And fans sent in suggestions, everything from like, covering it and smoking, or smoke gun. Uh, Fletty, tell the people kind of what you decided to do. What was our process? We just dumped the honey in a big uh, open sheet pan, and uh, threw it on the grill, and uh, threw some mesquite wood chips in the smoker box on the side and hit it with smoke and stir it every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, nothing real difficult about it. What other things had you thought about trying in the process of kind of investigating this? I, that was the only thing I really, after doing some research, there's not a lot of info out there on it. Some people have done that, or smoked honey, but the only thing I could conclude was, you know, just throw it on your smoker and... <laughs> Because bubbling I, through it wouldn't work. How would you get it to bubble through some honey? <laughs> oh, I could I'd think of one way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a big open. Can you said like a sheet pan, but it was more com it was like a casserole dish that was grill uh, friendly. It's like it was metal. yeah, it was a roasting pan. Yeah, and exactly. it was it was what kind of honey and how much? We used Trader Joe's mesquite honey. Um, we smoked uh, six pounds of the honey, and we added an additional three pounds unsmoked. And throughout the way, you were kind of stirring it. We agreed that like exposure, the surface exposure right. to the smoke was going right. to be kind of key. Yeah, trying to maximize our surface area so that. And I remember it changed color. I remember at one point there was like a kind of a before and after shot, and it did. It caramelized maybe or whatever color it's pulling out with that smoke. Yeah, a little bit. Not not extensively, but a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. What what was the call on the mesquite on mesquite for you? Just keeping the theme running? Ah, uh, it, it, I thought it would be interesting to try to pair the honey with the wood from the, the same tree. And since that's a gas grill, right? You were able, do you know what temp that was? Is it worth throwing out? I think, we, I think it was uh, around 100 degrees. The honey was around 100 degrees. I looked back at the video link you sent me and it, that's what I saw in the... Mm. I, I did, unfortunately did not take any notes on the temperature. Day. We were a little... Uh, that was after the darkness <laughs> drinking. Yes, it was. And, uh, oh, that's right. And Ooh. your boy, your quarterback boy getting out for the season. Aaron Rodgers got hurt. I was drowning my uh, we sorrow. Of course, yeah. yeah.
six pounds smoked, three pounds not smoked, stirred it up. You went through your basic um, mead making process, right? Right. And I decided to go with Scottish ale yeast. Uh, the idea there was mm. to try to use something that uh, didn't have a high um, alcohol or toxicity so to leave some residual sweetness. So it ferment, we started at 1090, it fermented down to 1014. And when we tasted it, it just, it, it there was smoke, there was honey. However, the alcohol was a little overwhelming. So I thought we need to kick up the uh, back sweetening a little uh, to balance it out. So I just added some more mesquite honey to the secondary and jack that uh, final gravity up from 1014 to around 1024. Was there a process for determining how much honey to back sweeten with? I used the app called Brewbot, oh. um, which has a... <laughs> back sweetening button? <laughs> it does have a... <laughs> shameless plug, shameless honey, plug. <laughs> honey shoots out of the ear jack hole. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Brewbot is an app that you developed. So I developed, yes. On the mead side of it, you figured out a way to tell people how to get from a gravity to another gravity? Right. Okay. So, it, yeah, it does uh, OG calculations and it does back sweetening calculations. And it's been tested and verified. Um, the actual pro data, um, initial data, comes from Kurt Stock, so I'm not just pulling this out of uh, <laughs> another region. <laughs> I had carboy sample at medium high smoke that to me came out most in the aftertaste like a scotch when you get a little smoke or peat at the end. This blends with honey in the front and finish smoky, but I remember it was also a very eye-opening experience. I've never back sweetened meat. I just let it go and it is what it is, mm -hmm. just like ciders. It was amazing that what I thought was, oh, I was like, let's not mess with it, you guys know. I think Fleddy knows what he's doing. So and when you, you did it, like, I was like, Whoa! Whoa! Oh my God! <laughs> Do we need to I'm pause gonna cry. for a minute? I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Smoke me down. Smoke me every day. <laughs> no, no. No, no. No, no. Oh, man. Y'all watching this, aren't you? So the point we were gonna make before we had a, a mead down was, <laughs> I think you were about to tell me maybe why something that tastes good before blending tastes even better after, or potentially. Well, my viewpoint is, or my meat quest, my personal meat quest, Ooh, hey. <laughs> is to find that balance and uh, where everything is playing well together. And I just thought prior to back sweetening, the alcohol yeah. was too high. I guess just, I was just so excited that the smoke actually worked that I was uh -huh. scared we were going to dilute it somehow. Yeah, okay. So what do you think, having tasted it before and after back sweetening? Oh, it's been so long. Um, I mean, our, when, so we, when we blended, I can't remember how you did it, but you kind of did like some sample cups with like mm -hmm. a little bit of sugar or a little bit of honey. We basically, it wasn't very scientific, but it was no. kind of like a one third, two third right. kind of blend, right? I think we just took a sample, we stirred a little honey and just to verify, is this the right better. thing yeah. to do? I mean, just to get an idea, you know, if you add a little sweetness, what is, what's it going to taste like before actually potentially ruining a batch? The end result is something I've never had before, which I mm -hmm. think is just amazing that this came full circle to an amazing thing. Uh, it's smoky, tons of honey, a little bit of wood even. I don't know if that's yeah. also from the smoke or the, the honey itself might carry some of that. But it's got, kind of like I wrote down here, it's got this little bit of whiff of something like when you pour a little small snifter of scotch mm -hmm. and like that kind of fume carries a little wood with it, a little smoke. It's good. It's very good. Can what we about go you? back to the uh, oh. the honey part where you your back sweetening? Mm -hmm. You're not changing the alcohol. No. But is it a, a mouthfeel that you're changing with the sweetness, or is that sweetness just masking that alcohol uh, forward feeling flavor? I think it just bringing it into balance, um, just toning down. Yeah, the the uh, the harshness of the alcohol. Mm -hmm. 
Flutty, you've made meads with black lime, you've made them with cacao, you've made them with chili peppers. So where does this smoked mead kind of fall in um, what you expected from the variables you were putting in? I thought it would be more intense. I thought the smoking of the honey would, would just be a huge in your face thing. And that's why I was reluctant to smoke all of the honey and why we only did two thirds of it. Mm -hmm because I had, I had no idea, and so I was really cautious. Um, but I think it's fairly subtle, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's a really nice combo. I mean, you know, sweet barbecue, sweet and heat mm -hmm. is a thing, so like, why, is, uh, why wouldn't uh, this uh, smoked mead work? Snoop said it would work. Every day. <laughs> Air day. Every day, Air man. Day. <laughs> what else, any other kind of tasting notes as a, as a kind of mead? Judge, if you were to get this, first of all, what would it be entered as? Specialty. Okay. Some sort of specialty. Yeah. You'd be able to explain to some degree what you had done. Yeah. Well, yeah. You try to tell judges as little as possible. Hmm. Because the more you tell them, the more opportunity there is for them to find fault with something. So. Okay. So what would you, upon getting this at a specialty table, think? I I'm, I can't. I, yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm my own worst judge. I, I don't, I can't really say. <laughs> so not from a judge's yeah. table, from a dude drinking oh. meat in a basement table. <laughs> it's what, shit. what do you think? I, it just got a, like a tantalizing balance of smoke and honey and, and the aroma. I don't think it, it tips one way or the other. I think they, it just, it it's works, it's going back and forth mm -hmm. and going, wow, that's really interesting. And yeah. then just like you taste it, And you get the honey up front and the smoke on the back end, and then it just kind of dries out a little, just enough for you to say, oh, I want some more of that. <laughs> for sure. Do you think uh, you'd do it again with smoke more of the honey? See what would happen? Or smoke a different honey? It might, um, yeah, I would not be, I would not hesitate to smoke the entire um, amount of honey. Because we hit this, the uh, the six pounds, we, we hit it with like two or three uh, additions of smoke. And mm -hmm. we, we, it was a good... It was an hour plus. It, yeah, it was, a, I it was So I, I would hit it with more smoke and all the honey. I think a darker honey might be interesting. Something with like more of like a brown sugar character mm -hmm. and, and some smoke to go along with that. I think that might be an interesting experiment. That almost seems caramelized without the smoke process actually doing that caramelizing without the grilling, but... And I recently had a, uh, a smoked sizer uh, that someone locally made, and I thought that was amazing. It was a really interesting combination. Had they done it by smoking apples before they pressed them, or smoking They smoked the, the water. <laughs> Smoke water every right? day. Okay. <laughs> it's like, wait! How it sounds like bong water. The, like, with the gun, kind of, a couple of people had suggested that, but I still didn't grasp Smoke completely water. the process. Did you? I, I don't remember the details. No. We were, uh, it was a, a short conversation, so I... But yeah, they, they smoked the water. Don't smoke the water. <laughs> That's what Dave Matthews says, don't smoke the water. Is that what he says? Don't drink the water. Don't drink the smoke water. I drank the smoke water once in college on a dare. Damn. How'd that work out? <laughs> Just kidding. I'd actually would never. Even on a dare Don't in say college. you never. Don't say you never do well. If I haven't yet, I'm probably not gonna. But I never drink the bee water, man. <laughs> to the end of a magnificent experiment hosted yes. by Steve Fletty. I can't believe it really worked. I know. Chip, why would you doubt me? I know. <laughs> well, Just I, the idea. I we didn't doubt you. We're going to put your cool share in the recipe. Definitely. We'll put the recipe on choppinbrew.com slash recipes, care and courtesy of Steve Fletty. If you like seeing three goofballs in a basement coming up with a joke that becomes a mead, please support us through Patreon, patreon.com slash choppinbrew. Keep this party going. Mm -hmm. Buy some honey, invite us over. Smoke honey. If nothing else, this should be a little push in the right direction. You could do a gallon version, which wouldn't be much honey that you're smoking, but this definitely is a good summertime meat. It could be a good wintertime meat as well, but I mean, this is like 
fire pit. Ooh, yeah. The fire pit. Drinking this around the fire at, at the cabin. That'd be nice. Chop for chop. Brew for brew. Smoke for smoke. <laughs> meat, meat for meat. meat. Ah! <laughs> Every day. shot in your backyard though that day that he was making the chili dude you're like half in screen the whole time like, me no hill no. i tried to like give him a cue but i was like there's no real tactful way to like grab a man and just pull him towards you move your ass over turn your lights up got our books like some nerds you sure you don't want your notes floody you can totally have them it's probably in my crotch <laughs> it is in my crotch <laughs> i can hey. see your crotch you reach around. Uh -oh. missed a pen but uh okay Fletty's cleaning his glasses. Shit's getting real. I can't see. <laughs> Fletty's got the big pour, which is I fitting. Look at the big pour. I mean, it's just a bigger looking oh, glass. Oh, man. All right. Mm. Top off every day. Does Fletty know he's invited to that? He's always invited. I think I invited oh. him on Facebook. To pig out. Pig out? When is pig July out? July 28th. Okay. Don't put that on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Brooklyn Damn. Park. New York. <laughs> Brooklyn Park, New York. <laughs> Upstate. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'll, 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 I'll beep that out like a like a police phone call would have to beep out like the name and address to protect the guilty. And fuzz my mouth because you know we've got lip readers out there. Get, get, the phone, get the phone. Get the phone. Come get in the phone. Oh, oh, the phone's attacking the meat. Here it comes. It's gonna get the meat. Oh shoot. Get you. Well, We're gonna be like, what the fuck are we looking at? There's like bubbles and oh. foam. So, Fletty, as you as you smell this, um, <laughs> did you fart? <laughs> oh, he's sniffing. Right. Oh, son of a bitch! Are you okay? God damn! What happened? Oh. I'm not moving. I I'm not moving I my hands that. or my feet. I'm just gonna stay mellow. Oh. Wow, I'm sure that's not the first one. What happened? I hit my knee on the corner of that thing. Ouch. I'm gonna pause this for a second. Why? That's good. That was a lot of work capping those Fletty. <laughs> Ow! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Don't leave, Chip. Don't do it. I'm not moving. Don't get hit pause again. <sighs> Maybe bring it in a little bit, Fletty, but be careful of your knee. But bring come towards in. Brian. Like, you can scoot. You want me to come that way now? Everybody you come this way! Over. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Oh man. Do you hit record again? Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> <laughs>